the geologic activity that we see at the surface of the Earth is fundamentally driven by heat in the Earth's interior. That's why things move, that's why volcanoes erupt. And one of the questions that's been very difficult to figure out is how deep is the heat coming from? Now, with the Earthscope seismic station, Go ahead, Don. we can see much more clearly than we've ever been able to deep within the Earth. The transportable array is an ambitious experiment that is continental scale. It was designed to get identical seismic instruments, one station every 70 kilometers on this amazingly regular grid, with each instrument recording for two years and then moving gradually across the country. Once we get to our site, either I or Dome will muck out the vault. Usually there's a little bit of water left over from the concrete drying. Then I go in and I start putting all the solar panels up. And Dome starts his installation. It takes us about two and a half to three hours, generally, if everything goes well, to complete a site. So this is like a hard drive records all the data, and then right here we'll mount the modem, which sends the data out over the internet through the cellular network. Uh, we have a charge controller in here, takes the power of this from the solar panels and charges our two batteries, and uh, that's pretty much everything other than the sensor. Are you ready? Yep. The seismometers installed at each of the transportable array sites are high fidelity sensors that cover and capture all of the motions of the earth that are produced by earthquakes. Got it, got it. And this allows the scientists to use earthquakes as a tool to look at the structure of the continent. Before, it was difficult because we could see a change at one given station, but the next station may have been 100, 200 kilometers away. So there's no pattern at all. Now the regular grid means you can see these waves from earthquakes clearly correlated from one station to the other. The data gets sent out live 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So we pulled up online with our laptop and opened the site remotely, check everything, make sure everything's going good, do some thumb tests. East to the east, it's coming in, Mike? Yeah, oh yeah, okay, You're good. Looks really good. Yep. All of the stations of the transportable array record data continuously. So it's sampled at 40 samples a second, every second, every day, all year long. Then you multiply that by 400 stations, then you start getting to large quantities of data. This flux of data, this huge pipeline of it from EarthScope was just becoming available as I was starting as a graduate student. And I started looking at it to understand the area around Yellowstone National Park. And in geology, we call it the Yellowstone Hotspot. It's an area that's unusual because there's volcanic activity in the middle of a tectonic plate. Earth's surface is composed of about a dozen very large plates 
and most major earthquakes and most volcanoes occur at plate boundaries, and there isn't as much geologic activity in the middle of a plate. So we can't explain something like Yellowstone very well in the context of plate tectonics. So one of the questions that's been very difficult to figure out is where is the heat coming from that's driving volcanoes at places like Yellowstone? And so that's something that's approachable with the Earthscope seismic data. We could see where seismic waves move faster and slower and relate that to temperature and where the heat's coming from. So the data that we get is in the form of seismograms, wiggly lines. And what they are is the ground motion, the ground actually wiggling, but just a very small amount, sensing tiny motions from things like earthquakes on the other side of the world. And I want to measure the arrival times of different waves, because then we know how quickly seismic waves are propagating inside the Earth. And so the color that's shown here is showing where seismic waves move a bit faster in the blue colors and a bit slower in the red colors. What typically makes seismic waves move faster or slower is temperature. So we can think of the red areas as being areas that are hotter and the blue areas being areas that are colder. So this is a horizontal slice in the Earth at 125 kilometers depth. And I need to use many of these slices in order to make a 3D model of what the subsurface looks like. So what we found beneath Yellowstone, looking at now a vertical slice, is that there's this kind of column of hot material that extends down to at least about 900 kilometers. And so this strongly favors the case of Yellowstone being driven by a plume, a buoyant rising volume of hot mantle that came from deep in the earth. People have hypothesized that some hot spots may be driven by heat coming from very deep within the earth, within the lower mantle, heat that has come out of the core. And then another group of people remained more skeptical about the observations because honestly, they were ambiguous before. We couldn't really tell the difference. And now we actually had the seismic data to, in a way, do it right. This high quality data has allowed people to look at changes in structure in ways that before you just couldn't. But what we're discovering is as new questions arise, since all the data are there, they're continually being reused. I've got the sensor, the cable, and the breakout box. So 20, 30, 50 years from now, People will be coming back and looking at these data because there's some nuance of earthquakes or earth structure that they want to go back and analyze in a different way. So it's an investment that I'm convinced will last for decades. Everyone kept saying this project can't be done, it can't be done, it's impossible. And uh, here we are, pretty much on schedule, under budget, and the data is just, it's beautiful data. I've been doing them for nine years. Don's been on the project for 10 years. It's been an adventure, that's for sure. <laughs>